that the ETF. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I read a message from somebody rather than an official source. Gotcha, gotcha. Given deadlines. Okay, we've got the block two hours ago. That makes sense. Approves eight. There we go. Lovely. Because there's Holy a... crap. What's up, everyone? We have Ethereum approval today. Nice, nice, nice. The Trump dance with the little. Gensler, Gensler's loving the crypto now. He's... Oh, yeah. He'll he'll go work for the Ethereum Foundation or something, a treacherous fucking hound, that guy. He, he will. Here's how you navigate it. What are you? Stay tuned, says Gensler. Okay. All right. Hey, Rick. Well, I'm not surprised how many people there are today because this is going to be an absolutely awesome session. Some of your best. Today's going to be today's going to be lit. It's going to be absolutely lit. What's up, Jason? In the chat. All right. I hope Gary Gensler gets gonorrhea. I hope it turns black and drops off in his hand. Oh, 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 oh man, it's it's. I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> All right. You live in Isan. You see worse every single day. Yeah, well, this is this is true. Yeah, this is true. Hey, David. Hey, David. Not sure if it's from my side, but I can't hear. I think that might be your side, Lula. Just check if you're muted or something. I do it. All right, nice. Um, I think Maurizio is going to join us, and I think Maurizio. whenever you're ready to get going, let me just get Maurizio. All right. So t today's format is I'm going to be teaching you everything I know about first of all picking major cycle bottoms. And interim, interim within bull markets cycle bottoms, and then I'm going to teach you the entry setups that I actually use every day, um, which Maurizio also knows. So I'm going to teach them quickly. I'm going to talk a little bit about Finrev just for five minutes, not a marketing heavy pitch or anything like that, and show you some latest results. And then Maurizio is going to workshop out these setups again and again and again until you've got them and answer your questions. And it should be a pretty cool thing to do. Awesome. All right. Ready to rock? Hey, Maurizio. Yep. Okay. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good morning, brother. So in, oh, last, in last week's workshop, this was the first slide of the presentation. This is what we had when we thought. This is what we had and what we thought was going to happen. And you like apples, how you like them apples. It's done exactly what we thought it's going to do. We told you that the bull run was started. The bull run has started. This happens exactly before things go parabolic. It's not too late yet, but if you wait until it starts to, to move, things might, might get away from you here. You might be starting out with a small stack. You might want to accelerate your gains. Today's workshop is the second in our series of showing you how to use the 50 to 1 leverage available on Perth Futures Exchange to multiply your profits. Since last week, I've added, well, let's see how much we've added in the last seven days. We've added 10,858 dollars in the last seven days. Um, the ETF thing fucked us up a couple of hours ago and we bounced back hard. Um, we've made we've made 10 grand and our little ten thousand dollar account is sitting at twenty three thousand dollars and all of our trades currently in the green. You can see the profits there. Profit, 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 profit. Not bad. I'm confident of being able to add significant gains next week as well. Now, I won't be able to do this very long. Like this idea that you can just double an account in a week and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again. I can do it for a little while, but it's not up to me. It's up to the market conditions. These market conditions, when it's easy easy to play, come and go. A large part of being successful as a trader is knowing that the weather's right, the sun's out, you've got to come out and play. And also... It's looking a bit cloudy. It's rainy. How about we go inside and watch Netflix instead? Every now and again, you get to play the game on cheat mode. And cheat mode in trading is unlocked when you get in early on a major move in a low liquidity period. And that's important to understand the low, that the low volatility periods have a statistical tendency to explode 
from low extreme. So you can maximize your risk reward simply by only coming out to play when it's your time. And let me, let me show you what I mean here. Okay. So I've got ATR as a percent as a proxy for volatility. You can see that any time it reaches, you know, multi-year lows of volatility is usually a time when things are about to start changing. It reached multi-low volatility here, and this was the perfect time to get in. We reached cycle volatility lows right here. It was the perfect time to start trading again. We reached cycle volatility lows since the big bull thing. So this is the lowest volatility since the whole thing kicked off about here. And this is why we were so red hot on it last week. It's like, this is we don't know the future, but this is the time when generally getting position pays off. Now, you can see the last three low volatility times, which is exactly how I do it. Like all the, sh all the bullshit I carry on with, this is how I really do it. The third time in a row, I've successfully called a crypto bottom this cycle. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it, how you can add this highly profitable skill to your game. Today's workshop is going to be on my four best entry setups. But first, I want to let you in on some little secrets. There's a couple of things you're looking for to pick major turning point bottoms. And I'm not talking about intraday, intra-hour. First of all, it has to be in a bull market. Everything that we do here is much easier in a bull market and much harder in a bear market. The market has to have sold off. We have to be dumping. The sentiment has to be broadly negative. And by sentiment broadly negative, I would say I'm starting to get customer complaint letters from people. Uh, I would say there's bitching in the group. I would say uh, if you jump on Twitter, major influencers are starting to call for, for, for more downside. People are starting to call for major cycle tops. Generally, the vibes are off. That's key. Because that negative sentiment means the thing's undervalued. Now, the last part of the sell-off also has to be the scariest and the fastest. And let me show you what I mean if we look at, say, pick an altcoin, Maurizio, major one, one that we like. Uh, let's do AVEX. Okay. So what we're looking for, the last part of the pullback here, to be the scariest, whenever you see a pullback that's been going on for a while and then it accelerates, that's the last people giving up. This is the last bits of hope being shattered into little shards of hope. When you see that with a low volatility time, it's like, ooh, this is tasty. This is the time to get interested. Does that make sense? So our plan for the, the coming weeks is I'm going to put on a series of these webinars. I'm going to teach you guys everything I know about leverage trading. I'm going to leverage trade uh, myself for the next six weeks. Um, we're going to see if we can turn this 10 grand, which is now $21,000. We're going to see if we can turn that into 100 grand in six weeks. Um, I reckon I can. If I can't, well, I'm full of shit, right? You'll see. You'll see. Um, we're going to put it into an expensive product to sell, but you guys are getting you guys are going to get it all first. You guys are going to get it all free, and your questions, comments, concerns are going to help inform the end product. So thanks for your help. Week one was position sizing and risk management. The recording is still up for a little while. Today is on trade selection, everyone's favorite topic. Now, the basics, again, if you have $1,000 in your account, the exchanges will give you up to 50 k to buy coins with. If I go to Ethereum and I say, I want to buy right now, there's $20,000 in that account. They'll let me buy 315 grand worth. Like, they'll let me just turn the leverage. They'll let me buy whatever I want. They'll let me go nuts on it. I can be really, really irresponsible if I want to. But there's a catch. If you use your, if you lose your initial deposit, so if I lose 20 grand on a 350 grand position, they liquidate me and I'm out of the game. And they liquidate you, you're probably getting a price you're not happy with. So let's say you have $1,000 in your account, you buy $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin at 60K. If Bitcoin goes down 50%, you lose and get liquidated. So the key intuition here is that leverage multiplies your gains, but also multiplies your losses. If you have two to one leverage, a 50% drop in your coins takes you out. If you have five to one, 20% drop will take you out. That's bad. Five to one is very, very dangerous. I was running uh, eight to one overnight and I got partially stopped out. Um, I'll show you what happened there in a moment. So what happened was I had a core Ethereum position and I had a position that I got long here with a stop loss here. And the announcement threw everything around. My trade idea is still right. It's still high. But if we look at the trade history, look at what happened to me down here. I opened this long at 3645. I closed it at 3640. I closed for $3,000 worth of negative PL. So that trade cost me $3,000. But I'm still in the game. That's the purpose of risk management keep you in the game. Side point, when other traders are being liquidated, is a very, very high probability of the market reversing. We're going to do another session on profiting just from this in a few weeks. Pro tip is you don't need much money to do this. I trade with multiple seven figures. When I figure it's time to get funky with the leverage slider, I usually start with 10K and just run it up just for shits and giggles. 10K is plenty, 1K is enough. Today's topic is everyone's favorite entry setups. Before we start, I want you to put in the chat which do you think is most interest, uh, most important, edge, risk management, or trading psychology? Maurizio, Ian, which, which do you guys? John Allen, we... Edge, I will say. Edge and risk management in my, like, in my order. Well, we got a lot of people who say that psychology is important. It's not, by the way. You know, the average expert trader that I know is a barely glued together borderline alcoholic who like does the most heinous shit in his personal life. Like I know guys earning, you know, multiple millions of dollars a year for 20 years who are all like that. Tra trading, the, the nutshell of trading psychology is just because you feel like an asshole when you trade badly doesn't mean that it's being you being an asshole that makes you trade badly. Trading psychology is downstream of not having an edge and doing shit that doesn't work. If you think that risk management is the most important thing, I'd encourage you to take to fly to Vegas, take the best risk management in the world, take some stuff we're teaching you here and go nuts on it and see how long you last with the best risk management in the world. You can't. Risk management is useless unless you have edge. Edge is everything. Edge is a hundred times more important than risk management and psychology put together. Those things are sprinkles on top, but our, asshole grifters try and pretend like they're the most important. The most important thing is, do I have an edge? Do I know this coin's going to go up or no, it's, or no, it's going to stop going up? Now, when should I place trades? You should place your trades on, unsurprisingly, when you think you have an edge in the market. And you should take them off when you don't think you have an edge in the market. An edge is a statistical probability that if you took the trade 100 times, you'd end up with extra money at the end of doing it 100 times. Things can change. If you make a prediction about the market and some shit comes down from on high, you need to be very clear about what your reason for a trade is. If, you, For example, today is the perfect example. If your reason for getting into the ETH trade was that you think that the ETF is going to get approved and, and Ethereum is going to go on a major run, if the Ethereum ETF just got approved today, yeah. But if it didn't, your reason for being in that trade would no longer be there. So you got no business being in that trade. You're just being a dick if you're hanging around waiting to get your money back, right? So I'm going to show you the correct stop losses and positioning today. So let's learn the setups. I'm going to run through these really quickly today. Don't worry, you're going to get the slides in your email. So don't worry about taking notes. And at the end of the, the way that we're going to do this is at the end of the session, I'm going to hand it back to Maurizio who's going to workshop all these through with you, do 20 examples and answer questions and get them until you got it exactly right. Uh, we've got another session on premium and funding rate. Um, 
John, but the the short answer is that the premium is like a forward looking funding rate without the squashing algorithm that the that uh, the the premium is like a more accurate forward looking slightly more predictive uh, version of funding rate, and we'll get into that. Okay, the first edge that we're going to look at is retests of lows. Um, let's start with the one that, that Maurizio just mentioned, which is AVAX. When we get a major low, what are we looking for? We're looking for, first of all, the last part of the down move to be, to be relatively fast and scary to shake people out. We're looking, ideally, for liquidations and you can see this on velodata.app for free. And oh, it's a five minute chart. Let's look it up for our chart. You can see we had a huge amount of liquidations on the on these candles, right? At this point. If everything's lining up, you should think this is a potential plot spot for us to make a long bet. It's not safe to bet long here. You could easily have another day. It's not safe to bet long here. It's not safe to bet long here. It's safe to bet long or safer when we have a completed retest of the lows. So the point that it's safe to get long with a stop loss here is right in this day. Today, we're going to show you a uh, uh, a setup to do that. Now, it has three elements. The first element is the lowest low in 10 bars. Okay, so what I mean is that you go 10 days back and this low is lower than all of it. Have we got that? Well, we have, this is the lowest low in 10 bars, 20 bars, 30 bars. Okay. The next thing that we want, element element one, lowest low in 10 bars. Element two, one or more higher closes without breaking the low, which is this red line. Here, this can happen in the same bar, but here we have element two. So we have element one, we have element two, one or more higher closes. Now we're waiting for element three, which is one or more lower closes without breaking this red line here. Okay, everyone's got that? Now, at this point here, we say this is a potential retest of the lows. If the market starts jamming here, we want to get long at this point. But it doesn't. So what do we do? The next day, as long as we don't break this line, we move our entry point to this line and we get in if it breaks here. But it doesn't break here. So we move it down and we keep moving it down until we get in. This is our entry price. This is our risk. And we're off and running. It's the it's the RTV setup from CSI, Marlon. Exactly so. Can someone in the chat call out a different altcoin and let's have a look and see how they work? So, here we go. So let's go back to the bull to the, to the bull run we've just had. You need a bull market. We've got a pullback. Does everyone agree that the last part of this pullback looks a bit spicier than the rest of the pullback? Yeah, this one looks a bit spicier. So at this point, we become alert that maybe this is a bottom. But we don't want to be guessing at it. We'll mark this as a potential bottom and say, have we got element one, the lowest low in 10 bars? Shit, shit. 
Have we got element two, which is one or more higher closes? Yeah, we've got element two for days. Element three, well, maybe, have we got a lower close? So here, our close is 1914. Here, we've got 1912. Close counts. So we're going to place an order to go long right here, if it's filled. And we're going to get long right here. If it's not filled, we're going to move that down to here for the next day, and we're going to get filled here. And how is that going to work? Why, it's going to work quite fucking magnificently, right? It's going to be the trade of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, let's do some, let's do some that didn't work. Okay, so let's do one that didn't work at the absolute top. Do we have the lowest low in 10 bars? No, we don't really. Um, here. The low here is 167.84. The low here is 167.57. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there's definitely this one here is the lowest low in 10 bars. What we're looking for is element two, a higher close without breaking the red line. Element three, a lower close without breaking the red line. We place our order to go long here. If price had have got above there, we would definitely be long into a losing trade. We cancel the order once it breaks the red line. So we so we throw that trade out. Now let's look at the next one, which I don't know if it worked. Um, let's see. We've got the lowest low in 10 bars. We've got a higher close and we've got a lower close. So can everyone see element one, lowest low in 10 bars, element two, one or more higher closes, element three, one or more lower closes, exactly freedom. Look how low volatility and liquidation is not an entry criteria. It's just something you look at and go, your spidey sense tingles. Generally you get, now, now I don't know if this trade's going to work. So you don't get in here, you move your entry, you move your entry point to here. We get in at this point and we get fucked around for a bit. Does our stop loss get hit? No, it doesn't get hit. It's probably just unlucky it doesn't get hit, but to, to be honest. But at least we've got some risk control on there. This is always on a daily daily chart. And we always set, set stop loss either at the lowest low or, or a, a couple of ticks behind it. Because usually what's happened is there's a bunch of people who are going to get liquidated here. So if they get liquidated, it's going to flash it down anyway. So you probably want to get out ahead of those motherfuckers. Does that make sense? Um, this is ATR percent that I'm using, but it's absolutely not necessary. Don't worry, Michael, we're going to be doing a bunch of examples of this. Could we give me one more? Um, Prime USD. Never heard of the bump. All right, let's do it. We have, let's see what the low here is. The low here is 1353. The low here is 1355. So this just survives our stop loss. We have one, lowest low in 10 bars. Two, one or more higher closes. Three, one or more lower closes. We get into this trade here, currently not in profit, but not hit the stop loss and survived a scare, this one might work. Okay, guys, don't worry, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. The next trade I want to show you is a losing trade I took overnight in Ethereum. So an inside day, and you all saw I lost that $3,400 in taking this trade. An inside day is a, a 
uh, reasonably strong entry. It's a day with a lower high and a higher low than the previous day. So, so let's get that right. I'll put it in the chat. A day with a lower high high and a higher low. Um, you, David, you size your uh, uh, you size your positions. Maurizio is going to show you using our spreadsheet, so you work out what's a position size that's not going to fuck you. And you just do that practically. You never you never actually look at the X buy leverage until it's like added up to all your trades. Okay, so this was a trade here. I got long here. My stop loss was here. I got stopped out, and now my trade. I don't know if it would have worked, but but that's the game. So this is quite a uh, uh, quite a reasonable edge. And we'll see one, this one here, yeah, here we go. So we see one previously in Ethereum. Breaks out to the upside and then continues to go and then continues to go. Once stopped out, do you ever try and catch that falling knife? No, dude, that's just copium. Copium. Stand up and walk away. You're probably thinking like a fuckwit. You're probably revenge trading. You probably want to make it back. You probably got some sort of hole in your soul. And you know what I do? Go eat an ice cream. I take a I take my doggy for a walk on the beach. I every time I get my feelings hurt, I go do something nice for myself. Okay. Inside days. Um, someone pick a uh, someone pick a major coin. Learn the trends and lines. All that shit's bullshit, man. That shit don't work. Ondo, there we go. Okay. During sideways periods, none of this inside bar stuff works at all. The market has to be in a bull move to do it. You can see it's generally a four-day thing. So this is an edge, which is the, which is if you're not making good money after four days, you ought to be out. In fact, I would just exit after four days, no matter what. You can see here we have a bar with a higher low and a lower high. Bump one, two, three, four, get out, no problem. Let's find the next one, and I would only enter these in the direction of the trend. Yeah, that one, this, here's one that didn't work. I don't want to present these as, oh, no, no, that's not one. I don't want to present these things as things that always work. I present these things as, as things that are a slight edge. So here's one that got in and then got out for a small loss. Um, if it's trending down, you can short it, but there's um, shorting, Things in a bear market is something in a bull market is something that I do every now and again. But you have to be aware that shorting is inherently more difficult than going long. That oh sorry, I'll have to switch my stop and restart my video. Shorting is inherently more more difficult than going long, and going short in a bull market is really trying to get cute. So you should do it sparingly, very sparingly. Okay, so so moving on from inside days. The next setup that I want to show you is called a fake out. Who knows this setup? Oh. All right. Fake out is where we have, first of all, first of all, we have a spike low. A spike low is a bar with a lower uh, a lower low, a higher low to the left of it and a higher low to the right of it. So I'm gonna go and mark all the spike lows on this chart.
Okay, so these are spike lows. You can see they have a lower, a higher low to the left and a higher low to the right of it, right? Uh, could I explain exit in four days? Yes, this any pattern based stuff is very weakly predictive. And because these are slight alpha and slight price inefficiencies, and they're going to be resolved fairly quickly as other participants in the market notice them, you they're not good enough to last longer than four days, basically. All right. So, we, so the element one is we have a spike low. Element two is we have the first candle to break a spike low. And you can see here, we have a spike low. This spike low didn't break the previous spike low, but this spike low is the first bad boy to cut through that, right? Everyone see that? Like we've got a spike low and we've got another candle that's breaking through that spike low. Everyone got that? Setup complete. We're on. How do we trade it? We place an order to go long if it breaks the bar high with a stop loss at the spike low. This is our entry point. This is our stop loss point. What do we want to do? We want to at least bank half after four days, at least. If you still have strong momentum, you can leave a flyer. Like if the market has momentum, the coin has momentum. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that soon, like how to let a runner. But some profit with all these should be banked. Okay. You guys got that? All right. Vacuum effect. Now we're getting cute. Now, let's look. One of my favorite setups that's banging off right now. We got to play here, guys. We got to, we got to, we got to play. We got to play. Fucking, so we're in a trading range here. Ondo, which is one of you guys posted. We're in a trading range. If you're planning on selling your Ondo and we're right here, we're so close to the highs. Do you want to sell now or do you reckon you'll get a better price for in it in, inside a day? Who would sell now? Who would wait for tomorrow? Michael's waiting. Monica can sell now. John W. sell now. Wait. So I'm telling you that there's a very high probability that we're going to that we're going to do either this and bust through or touch it and then sell off. So most smart traders will wait until here before selling if they're planning on selling. They pull their orders. So what this creates is a vacuum effect. You can just feel the order book liquidity dry up as the sellers go, well, fuck, I'll just come back in, a two, in two hours. I'll get a much better price. We can use that to create acceleration and momentum in, in the day that we want. So here we go. We're going to. So what you're looking for is a coin, which is definitely in a bull market, definitely come out of a sideways trading range, and is close enough. I call it within spitting distance of the all time highs. Now, how I'm going to place this order is so I'm going to identify it on the daily chart. I'm going to drop down to the hourly chart and say, do I need to be aggressive? Or do I need, or, or can I be cute with the entry? Here, I probably need to be quite aggressive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my position size calculator. And we're going to say, yeah, I'm going to almost have to market jam that. Okay, 1.04460. And my stop loss has to be way the fuck down here at 0.57143. That's a big stop loss. So it's not going to be a big position. 
and we're going to we're going to risk twenty one hundred dollars on this trade. So our position size is four thousand four hundred and thirty eight. It's not that big. So I'm going to move the slider and instead of doing it with the slider, why don't I fucking do it right? And this one, I'm probably going to have to. The operative position here is to not be a dick for a tick. Like if you see that the market is moving, you really want to get in straight away, which is what I've done. So you can see that that resting order is filled. I'm jumping in. This is what the five minutes. So when you're jumping down to it, so I start with a daily chart. I drop down to an, to an hourly chart and go, can I be cute? Can I set a limit order a bit down? Or is this fucker running? Is this likely to run and gun without me? If it's likely to run and gun without you, the operative the operative principle is don't be a dick for a tick. Don't be a dick for a tick. You want to get in. Now, that trade is on. Now, I can see the little bastard here. I want to edit my stop loss and go stop loss price point five seven one four three. And you can see my expected loss is $2,021. What about not using a stop loss? There are times when I don't use a stop loss. Uh, and we're going to cover this in uh we're going to cover this in next week's webinar. Uh yeah, we're going to cover this in detail in next week's webinar. I won't, I won't get bogged down today. So that's the vacuum effect. This is actually a really, really good trade. The next one is breakouts. The same basic deal, but you're wait, waiting for a breakout. You're waiting for you're waiting for it to get above here. Now, there's two types of breakouts. Let's look at Ondo because we've got some previous breakouts. The first type of breakout is a breakout where we have a close above all the other previous closes. Ideally, a close above all the other previous highs. This tells us that the market didn't sell off here. We've got implied acceptance of the new reality of high prices. This is the gold standard. So actually, let's look at Ethereum or, or actually, let's look at Bitcoin. This has got the cleanest examples. So here is the old breakout level. You can see this one here. It closed above. Makes it a higher probability breakout. Now, about 35% of breakouts revisit the breakout level or fuck around around. So this, it doesn't say anything that it just doesn't do anything straight away. Quite a lot of breakouts fuck around. Breakouts are annoying to trade um, because, excuse me one sec. Come on, little doggy. Good Labrador. Good Labrador. Ondo is flying, dude. Uh, how far above the line does it have to go? It just has to, uh, ideally, you want it to close above the line. But I don't enter these intraday. I wait for the close. Really good question, Fred. So here, it's closed way above the line. There's no sign that's going. You just have to, you just have to ape in here. So, you know, with Bitcoin, as soon as we get above here, all the haters who've been saying it's all, it's all over are going to be like, we are so back here. So we do exactly the same thing, our same position size calculator, our same, our same, our same, our same, right? It's not the vacuum effect. The vacuum effect is superior and faster and earlier. Higher risk reward, higher risk, but higher reward. Breakouts will, are emotionally difficult to trade because about 35, 40% of them fuck around a bit before they take off. Um, and that can be annoying. The next thing we're going to talk about is knife catching. In fact, let's look at me getting fucked just now. My stop getting hit. So you can use velodata.app. You can use Coinalyze. Those are two free ones. Another one I like is Spread Fighter, but it's a paid thing. What you're looking for is any time... 
you have a giant big fuck off candle on the five minute chart. And you have liquidations. You can see these are, this is me personally being liquidated here. When I'm being liquidated, think about what happens. Would I prefer to have been st still in this trade? Absolutely. Absolutely, I'd prefer to still be in this trade. I got, I didn't, no one asked my permission. This was a prison rape of the trade. They just bent me over and stuck it in. There wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of loving with this. I was the scam wig. So it stands to reason that anytime you see a scam wig, you, if you see this in real time and you're sitting in front of the screen, ape reflexively long, not with a limit order, with a market order, or if you catch it in real time with a market order, but you want to start layering limit orders down here. If you catch it on the, on the way down, you want to use limit orders. If you're catching it on the bounce back up, so the bounce, so it would have looked like this on a one minute chart. Like if you can see it on a one minute chart, because all this will have happened in like 30 seconds, right? If that, if you see this, you start layering in orders and keep layering them in. If you're catching it on the bounce back, you have to market order in because it'll move too fast. So you, so you would market order here. Anywhere from here to here is still is still good. Why did it drop like that? It dropped like that because people were being liquidated at prices that weren't that they weren't being chosen. So it hit someone's stop loss that pushed that pushed the, that triggered a market sell order, which pushed the market down, which hit someone else's stop loss, which triggered a market sell order, which pushed the market down, which triggered my stop loss, which pushed the market down, and so on and so on and so on and so on. It's like a a, a pebble causing an avalanche down down the, the hill. And you'll see spot buyers buying, liquidated traders getting fucked. This is absolutely chef's kiss, beautiful entry. A cascading effect. And you can be reasonably sure that it's going to get back to at least where it was before it fucked up. So how to play this? You want to have most of your bag out when it's at fair value, at least half. Take a little bit, take a little bit more above fair value, and leave a moon bag with a stop loss at the lowest, at the low of the week. You don't try and catch your own liquidated knives, though. That's revenge trading. That's just getting like if you try and get too cute with the market gods, then like that's just too cute. Dude. Don't do it. All right, so everything is downstream of edge. If you take trades with no edge, you're going to eventually die the death, death of a thousand cuts. Don't believe me? Go to Vegas. With the best risk management, best trading psychology in the world, you're fucked. Nearly all the problems that you have are from having no, no edge. And, you know, we went through this last week. You know, you'll notice I often take trades that people in the group think aren't going to work. And that's because the sweet spot for risk is when you aren't quite sure yet. If the trade really has edge, the most edge is going to be at the start when it's the least competitive. Okay, the key point is that if you catch one good trade at the start of a move after a multi-month pullback, if it really works, you can ride this right to the beach. So if if any of our ETH trades work at the moment, and it looks like they are, I don't plan on taking them off. I plan on riding them for a long way. Um, that's not relevant. That's not relevant. Not, not relevant. Uh, how much should you risk per trade? If it's a big stack, if it's your only stack 2% per trade, I'm doing 10% of my little toy risk stack per trade. It's fine. It's a small account. I don't care. Now, the total leverage limits, early on in a move, you can be really, really aggressive. You can have probably up to four to one leverage. But as soon as you start to see the first speed wobbles, the first time you start getting little flash crashes, you have to back it down to one and a half to two times leverage. So early in a move, four to one leverage, midway, three to one. When you start to feel confident, back it off to two to one. And when the speed wobbles start to happen, 1.5. This is how to stay safe. Um, personally, no, but I'm going to cover that in a later webinar. Uh, the important point is that if you have five long trades, you don't have five long trades. You have one trade expressed five different ways. This is all the same turd rolled in different colors of glitter. So in practice... You risk five percent of your track until you stack until you reach a max leverage limit. Then you stop. You can't take it. 
Now, my goal for you guys is the ability to do whatever you want, wherever you want, with whoever you want, for as long as you want. And this is really easy to do and, and practical to do about three, three months out of every six while we've got a bull market and we have a bull market about one year every three. So it's not practical to trade like this all the time. Let me show you a way that's practical to trade all the time. So actually, we're not doing that anymore. Let me show you how I really trade. Um, okay, so um, this is a super degenerate 100 vol, highly leveraged account that I've got. Um, which I just added 67 to, which is down to 56 today. It's losing money because I'm tr trading at too high a voltage, uh, volatility. But I want to show you exactly how the trading system that I really works. So you put it, uh, I haven't even adjusted my net principle yet. So it's a poor example. But any, anyway, it shows you what your market value is. The, the profit and net principle is wrong. Sorry, I'm an idiot. I haven't, I haven't done this yet. So it shows me what, what's in my portfolio today. What are the biggest positions I'm holding at Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, and Jasmine? And you can see that today I'm mostly long with a couple of shorts. That's the way that I want. Um, that is a 90 vol account, uh, which is ridiculous. Like it, like my proper money is like 50 vol. Like 90 vol is really like super leverage. 90 vol is on the outer edges of, of, of what's nothing. So we've got two shorts in here and a lot of longs. And every day... It, it trims around the edges to keep me in my ideal position. So today it's selling, you know, 100 bucks worth of algo, selling a few bucks worth of Adam, buying um, buying 100 bucks worth of ink. Now, how it actually does it is like this. So we have a bunch of different algorithms which make a forecast. And we have six different algorithms that blend into a forecast. When that forecast is positive, we start going long. So you can see here, we started increasing our position. When the market started going sideways, we started decreasing our position. And you can see that from the lows, we started increasing our position. Our position today is a 10. So a 10 is a normal size long, a 20 is a maximum, a negative 10, 20 is a uh, normal size short, negative 20 is a maximum. If we if we look at this for the last, in general, we make money when the market moves and we lose money when the market goes sideways. That's basically what we do. How does this work out in the long ter term? It works out really, really well. So in the five years that we've been doing this, you know, Bitcoin does really well and then breaks your heart. Like, this would from here to here, Bitcoin is the yellow line, was an 82% drop, including a 62% single day drop. And then Bitcoin did really, really, really well. It looked like it was going to go to the moon and then lost half its value really quickly inside a couple of weeks. And then it came back. It looked like everything was going to be okay, but it was not okay. Looked like a great dip to buy. It was not a great dip to buy. It fucked you and then fucked you again. And then Sam Bankman Freed fucked everyone for one last time then. And now we're back to where we were. In that time, our system, just kept on making money. And you can see that we have sideways periods. We don't really have pullbacks. Our drawdowns through that period have looked like this. So actually, they're, 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 they're into this sort of max 20% drawdown. So we have an average drawdown of 8.3% and a max drawdown of just over 20%. And that's where we're at now. We have, even during the bear market, we're making a CAGR of 107%. Um, no, we don't ever do a scalping strategy for any reason because scalping is extremely hard and high fees and has to be high skills. And and uh, uh, all those people who tell you they're good at scalping, they're also full of shit. So this is what we do. It does uh, it does one hundred percent per year. Uh, it's done it, it. It's done it every single year. Um, let me.
So this is when we started running our own money with it. So I think this is uh, I think this is a more realistic simulation. So this is the actual results compared to Bitcoin from when we started to run our own money. So we ran this for 10 months running our own money first before we opened it up to clients. And you can see that Bitcoin did absolutely horrendously and we made a little bit of money. And then, but we never lost our original stack and we opened it up to clients around here. It went sideways, lost a little bit of money, then started to make money. And then we had the bull market and it's off and running. Our drawdowns, our real money drawdowns, right now we're a little bit past 20%. So we're well past an average drawdown. I think it's turning around right now. We're positioned long. The market looks good long. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't make an absolute ton of money right now. Um, these have been our monthly returns. You can see they're extremely uh, right-tailed. A couple of big months make all the difference. You know, like this 27% month, 16% month, 31% month, 34% month, 10% months. Without those big months, you miss out. So my point is, this is not a strategy that you try and time in and out, up and down, in and out. Don't try and get cute with it. Just leave your money in. If you do want to invest any extra, the time to do it is these points and these points and these points. How does it work? We take... The sharp ratios of all of our signals, we have different breakout signals, short and long-term ones. Right now, breakout 40 is outperforming breakout 160. It gets more capital. We blend all those breakout signals together to get a sharp ratio on one signal. And then we apply capital, more capital to the ones that are performing the best. This is not the back test of FinRev. This is the actual live FinRev uh, portfolio management system. So what we're doing is we're applying some heuristics to say, okay, if if this if breakout signals are working better, we want to apply more money. We want to apply more capital to breakout signals. If moving averages are working better, we want to apply more capital to them. And they and and they they come in and out, and it's different for each coin. Like if we look at say Ethereum it looks slightly different and we're applying a different portfolio weight. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're getting the mathematically perfect portfolio for the volatility target that you want. Now, this is the system that I run. This is the system that that I've got um, pretty much all my money in, like aside from a, a little bit of discretionary punting on shit coins. But what if you could earn twice as much as this? What would that do for your life? How much faster could that get you to your freedom number? And if we're talking about the difference between 100% a year in blue versus 200% a year in red, you can see after one year, it's not that much difference, but after two years, it really streaks away. And after three years, it's ludicrous. And how the really big algo trading firms, like the Rentex, the Jane Streets, they have many, many different algorithms, like, like thousands of them. We have 36, they have a thousand. And why do they do this? Because the whole is more than the sum of the parts. You get a diversification between algos, the same as you get a diversification between stocks. So carry is the next thing we're at. Carry is a, a, a beautiful edge. There's far more institutional money using it than trend. You can see, even though it's not quite as good as trend, it's only 53% CAGR at 1.17%. But it tends to work when trend doesn't, which is a really big value add for us. So because of that, when we combine in a 65-35 mix, mix, we're combining carry, which is a 53% sharp 1.17, with trend, which is 100% per year sharp 1.71, we get some magic. And, and we get some real magic. Now, I would advise no one running at 243% per year target. I would like to dial that back because this is going to give you drawdowns around 35%. Most of you... I'm going to bitch at drawdowns of around 20%. So at 35%, you're going to be hating me. You're going to be wanting to pull your money out right here. Don't do that. So what uh, uh, what I would suggest is to, is to not go as wild here. We set up a volatility target for you. Everything's custom for you. But anyway, the, the performance increase is remarkable from adding just one extra edge that's a good edge 
And I recommend trading this at a target of around 180 to 200% per year. This is the difference between retiring at 40 and retiring at 50. Um, so here's the deal. Um, we have three tiers of FinRev available for you today. FinRev Silver is $1,000. We're not giving it away for free anymore. FinRev, if you have it for free, good luck. Great. Uh, FINRA of Gold, 6,500 for, for three years of fully automated trend following trading. So that's what I've demonstrated for you today. And FINRA of 9,500 gets three years of automated trading with all of our systems, including cross-sectional carry and our future systems, our future upgrade. But it also gets to you the ability to run multiple accounts. So you can do what I've done here. I've got an account running at DGEN Leverage and I've got a Sensible account. So what this does is allows me to have uh, an automated account with altcoin-like leverage with altcoin like returns so for 6500 for 3 years it's like 140 bucks a month you get 3 years of automated algorithmic trading you get a vip onboarding with one of our expert crypto trader coaches you get very comprehensive statistics and monitoring everything i've showed you today you get you you can stop and start if you've got an altcoin that you want to go balls long on you can pull it out stop start whatever We've, if we've got a double your money guarantee. If you aren't in profit after your first 12 months using the system, we'll let you use it for free until you've doubled your money. Your time doesn't start until then. Platinum, all the same thing, except you can have multiple accounts, multiple exchanges. If you're worried about Binance potentially going broke, you can split it between Binance, Bybit, DYDX, KuCoin. If, you're, if you want to have a bit of a barbell strategy where you have 90% of your money fairly safe and 10%, you, you're swinging for the fences. Very smart thing to do. Got both trends following and cross-sectional carry, the same double your money guarantee. Um, I strongly I strongly recommend that this is the right time to get in. Like you could, you shouldn't really look at what I say as much as take, it, any, take account of what I actually do. And what I actually did is on the 18th of April, which was right here. Here I added. And that hasn't been a great decision. I've lost money since then. But but that's what I think is, is generally adding when you're in drawdown is the smart thing to do. Um, and I strongly suggest you just click on finrev.trade forward slash call and, and make this happen. Um, now, I'm going to hand it back. Simon, I absolutely know it feels like you can't see yourself doubling your money, but I absolutely guarantee it's probably going to happen. I, it's done it every year. Every year I've been in it, I've been like, oh, it's not going to work this year. If I could write it off every year, it fucking does. So um, I reckon we'll be surprised. Um, Lula, if you have over $100,000 to put in, I'm I'm happy to talk about percentage of profits instead. Awesome, bro. Bro. Fuck yeah. Winners win. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to hand it back to Maurizio at this point, who's going to workshop, especially that RTV setup. I would buy hey Bit, by the way, uh, over BitGet. I think BitGet is dodgy, personally. Okay, I'm going to leave it to Maurizio. <laughs> All right. Hey. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Okay. So let's, I'm going, to, I'm going to go and share my screen. And yeah, I think some of you already know the setups, but let me just go ahead and share my screen. Um, All right, just have too many screens here. All right, so let me just, uh, let's start only with the setups, right? So first things first. So is anyone wants to give me a coin and we'll go through it? Let me just, uh, Turn on the chat. All right. A lot of requests, a lot of requests. Let me. Airway, find the automatic pip. Okay, let's go through this. Magic, magic. Oh, a lot of requests. Okay, let's have a look. 
All right, let's go with uh, let's pick one. Let's go R and R. Yeah, I was I was looking at R and R the other day, so that that could be a really good example. R and R. All right, so let's have a combine. And um, by the way, um, because you guys trade in futures, right? So and this is going to be a leverage, so we have to do futures. So make sure that you load the right chart as well, because the, the, there is a there is a big difference between not big, but some exchanges will have a difference between a spot and um, futures. So for instance, if I load, let, let's let's have let's have this example R and R, which is a spot. But let me just put it on the side and let me load in here the actual PEP, the actual uh, perpetual future, right? And uh, uh, and the R uh, use the T dot P. Okay, so that's the actual perpetual future on your right. This is the spot market on the left. Have a look, and it's slightly different. So uh, our spot market. Uh, it is ten point twenty one, and in two point twenty one twenty nine, and this is twenty one sixty uh, twenty sixty eight. So you guys see that it's a different in price. Why is that matter? Because when you're actually setting up your stop loss, right? If you're using the wrong chart, definitely either you're gonna stop out or you're gonna lose more than you plan, right? At the end of the day, if you wanna uh, set up your leverage, right, you have to make sure that you use the you use your your right chart. Usually, the best way to do it is using your broker. So if you use Hyperliquid, like Scott showed you, um, essentially, you know, Hyperliquid will give you the right prices. So those those are the prices that we need to use. In this example, I'm going to be using Bybit. I trade on Bybit. So so, but I want to make uh, I want to make that difference. You're always going to have different charts. If you trade on Binance, same thing. So with Binance, you 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 have the spot market and you have the futures market. And hyper liquid you is going to have spot and and, and futures in the future, <laughs> but uh, essentially they only have PEP. So make sure that you use the chart. All right. So coming back to this. So um, essentially right here we had a setup, right? Um, so low is low in, in about ten days, which is about here, right? Ten days you can First of all, you loaded it into your daily chart, and you see here that. Um, you have the lowest low, and then you have the lowest low. So we mark the lowest low right here. You pray, by the way, if you don't know how to draw a, a line in, in trading view, uh, you just basically clicking here on your menu, uh, select trend line, and then just draw it right there, All right? Perfect. So if you wanna make it straight, probably you guys have uh, seen me do this uh, on all the videos that I do. You can actually double click on the line itself, right? And I know some people are very advanced in trading view, but I just taking it slow um, for the ones that haven't. Uh, trading view is a great tool and it's gonna help you a lot. You can actually um, configure uh, alerts, you can configure things for your phone, and you can even like uh, set up orders and things like that. So when you go to coordinates, that's your price, right? So you basically double click here, copy and paste the same price and that's how you make it straight, all right? Perfect. So that's our, our essentially our stop loss, okay? Uh, we might uh, talk about it, how far do you put your stop loss in the, yeah, we'll probably we can, we can talk about it in the next session, but for now, let's assume that we are going to place the stop loss just at this line. We definitely want to lower, let's put it a little bit lower just, just for fun, okay? So that's our stop loss. Now, where's the setup, right? So. The setup actually starts here. You have a higher high right here, candle, lower low. Now we sort of start uh, with the setup and that 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 something that we call the retest, uh, which is an RTV setup from, from the guys that have done the CSI course and stuff like that. So we technically using the same um, setup. So you start placing an order here, just make this line. Um, all right. All right, so you place an order there. So let's say you arrive and let me just do a replay. So by the way, TradingView has this tool that is called replay that only essentially it's only available for the people that actually pay for TradingView subscription. So you actually click on replay and you can just go back and replay the market 
as it happened, right? So this is really handy for you to train your setups and to realize what you're going to do on the next day because the fun part of the replay is that right now, I just set up the replay as if it was um, Thursday, the 11th of April, 2024, right? So how do how, let's let's start trading from here so from from the perspective if i've come if i come down and see a setup that it goes back what is my lowest low in the last 10 days right so if i go back one two three four five six seven eight nine ten my lowest low in the 10 days is this one right so i draw a line right there right and now that could be your stop loss right that could be uh, you place an order right here. Sorry, uh, higher, 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 lower, low, lower, lower, close. Sorry, higher, close, higher, close, higher, close. Essentially, a bullish candle, right? So after this one, you're looking for a bullish, bullish, bullish candle, and then you, in order to, in order to have the 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 RTV complete, you need a bearish candle, and then once you have the bearish candle closed, then you place an order, a limit order. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a stop limit order or a conditional order, right? We we can talk about orders in the future, but then essentially, um, yeah, you need to know you need to understand the difference between a limit order, a stop order, and or or a conditional order, what is called on, on the brokers, right? So I'm going to place an order right there, and essentially you walk out, right? You wait for that order to get filled, and that's it. Next day, you come down and say, oh this order hasn't been filled. So now you bring the order down to that high or a few ticks above that high and walk away, right? And then you come down next day and say, oh, okay, I haven't been filled. You drop the order down, but you keep the same stop loss. However, while you do this, you need to adjust your position sizing and you need to adjust your risk. So let me just pull up, uh, let me just pull up our, our, uh, our position sizing calculator. So I'll tell you what I mean by this. Okay, let me just split this right here. Uh, let me just split this. All right, so and let me just minimize this. All right, so for instance, on April, on the Tuesday of uh, 9 of April, right? I'm going to place that order right there. And let's say that my account is $10,000 and I'm placing this on RNDR and I'm going to risk 10% of my account. So I know that my risk, I'm going to risk $1,000. Uh, I'm going to risk $1,000 on this trade, right? Of, of 1,000. So my entry price is going to be around 10.62. Uh, you can double click right here. Copy and paste. It'll be easier. That would be my entry price, right? And my stop loss is going to be this one. 8.6658, right? All right. We're not placing any targets at this stage, right? Because uh, we manage that position. Uh, we're going to manage the trade manually. So essentially, as you can see, this is the amount of, uh, this is your position size at the moment. So if you go to your exchange and place this order, you need to actually place an order of a value of $5,415, right? Which is going to give you uh, around 500, 509 uh, contracts or crypto, right? So you're buying that amount, okay? So you go and place the order. I'm not going to place it right now. I'm just going to go through the, through, through, through the basics of the setup, right? And then um, next day you come along and say, oh, I haven't been filled. Now you drop the order here, but your risks, your, you, you need to change the position size because your risks actually change. So you need to actually create new values here to, to delete your order and create a new order. Let me show you why. So this order now is going to be placed at, 9.5383, you keep the same stop loss, the stop loss doesn't move, right? But now your order 
see that your position size change. Why? Because your risk change, your leverage change. And now you're going to be using 1.09 leverage out of your account, right? Uh, which is really, really good, okay? So that's something that you have to do manually, right? You have to sort of update your order. It doesn't take long. Once you learn, it takes probably about five minutes to, to, to update this order, right? Um, but it's something that you do have to manage manually because essentially you, 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 you're getting a better entry, so to speak. Now here, next day you come along, you, 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 you can see that you didn't get filled and now you move it down, right? And then you do the same thing. So now my new entry should be a 9.5564, uh, 5564, right? And then your size change. So you delete the, the, the existing order that you have on your broker and now you actually put this new size, right? And by changing the size, it doesn't change the risks. So that's the beautiful thing about using leverage, right? Because you determine whatever you're going to lose in this trade, or you know, you're managing your, your, your risk. This is the maximum amount of money that I'm willing to lose on this trade. Therefore, once you go ahead and place your stop loss and, 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 and stop loss, um, that's going to be the maximum. However, bear in mind that this calculation here doesn't take into account fees. Why? Because every broker, depends on the volume that you trade, has different fees. And also, sometimes is, you're going to have a little bit what is called slippage. So imagine that the price actually moves to your stop loss, right, pretty quick. What happens is that once it hits your trigger or your stop loss, the broker is going to fill you, at, like it's going to take you out at, at the best available price, which you could be a little bit over this line. So have in mind that it might take you a little bit more than $1,000 plus fees, plus slippage, all right? Sometimes the slippage is positive. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have positive slippage. So have that in mind that always is not going to be that exact. This is just a calculation for you to understand how you're going to start placing your orders. All right, beautiful. So uh, if we continue along, so now next day, right? Let's see what happens in, in what happened next day. Forward, bang. So it got stopped. Oh no, we did not. Essentially, we didn't. We did not get stopped out. The reason why is because we never got filled, which is beautiful. And that's the beautiful part of placing these orders above, right? We're trying to we're trying to minimize the risk in terms of not entering at a wrong price, right? So this candle just went all the way down here. But guess what? We did not enter, right? But now because this actually invalidated this stop, we go and cancel the order. The order should be already, like the order shouldn't be filled. So essentially you haven't lost any money at all because you never got into a trade. Now we have a brand new stop loss, right? So this is a brand new stop loss. Why? Because now we have the low, this is the lowest low in the last 10 candles back, all right? But guess what? We don't have a setup yet. Why? Because we need to wait for a couple of days for the setups to develop, okay? And what are we looking for? We're looking for a higher close or a bullish candle, one or more higher uh, bullish or bullish candles. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that way. And then one lower candle, and then we start placing the order right there, right? So let's see what happens in the next day. Bang. Oh, oh my bad. I don't want to go that far. My bad, my bad. Let me just go back to what it was. What it was. All right, so hey, no, this one forward. All right, so next candle, guess what? Next candle, it broke the low. So now we have a brand new low. So bang, that would be a new slow, right? Now we need to wait for a, for a setup. So we go next, all right, next day. And this is on a daily basis. So every day, every day, okay. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? It looks like uh, someone is not able to hear me properly. All right. I'm three, three, clear, three. My good friend. I can clear. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Beautiful. All right. So we have the new law here. Now we have a bullish candle. So in order to have a, a, a setup complete, we need a lower candle, like a bearish candle. 
essentially a red candle or black candle, depends how you actually set up your, your chart. So we don't have a setup yet. Let's let's see what happens the next day. Bang. Next day, we do have a setup now. We have a lower, lower close. So we have one bullish, one close. And now we're going to set up uh, our trade right here on the high. All right. So now we're going to place that order. How will we place that order? Um, 9.5437. That will be our, our entry. 9. Right, and our stop loss is going to be here. Sweet. So now the order that I need to place in the broker is this size, 2,550, which is going to give me this amount of credits and same deal. If this, I'm still risking the same, I'm not changing my risk. You can go lower, of course. I, I'd rather go lower. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very conservative, so I'd rather do trades of five percent tops. Um, that's just my my. my I call it a little bit more more aggressive than me on that uh, side. So you can decide your risk according to when you start. Probably, you know, if this is the first time that you actually do leverage trading, I will recommend that you start with probably three two percent trade, so you can start getting the hang of it, or you can yeah, but you know. Slow level, like, because you don't want to burn your account, right? Uh, any mistake that you do in the broker, let's say you don't place the order, or you went too hard, too too much with the size, or the stop loss you didn't place it, then it could be a risk. So, so once you learn do that sort of stuff, probably start with your uh, with your risk low, and then you start putting up your risk according to your skills, right? All right, so we place that order, and now we we'll go next. All right, so we didn't get filled. Now we move the order down and then we change it. We change our order in the broker, same thing. Um, now we change the entry price right here. Right, so 2,986, so that's fine. Now we walk out essentially, and then we go to the next day. We didn't get filled. We drop the order down and you get the gist now, right? Um, so entry price, there we go. So now I delete the order and actually now this is my new size and I click okay. And then we go next, the next day, same thing. We didn't get filled. So, all right, right there. Perfect. So now we place the order. And essentially you keep doing this every single day until you're filled or until the stop loss has is is no longer valid, right? Or the trade or the setup is has been invalidated. Um, it doesn't take long, right? Once you get used to it, it's actually very, very, very easy to do this. Uh, you can actually do it from your phone, right? If you have if if you have an expertise and you know that you already have a setup and stuff like that, as long as you understand these calculations, then you only need to drop this and change your size, right? Important because otherwise you change your risk, okay? And uh, now we go next. All right, so what happened here is that now you're in a trade. Why? Let me just make this bigger. All right, why you're in a trade? Because you get filled. So essentially what happened while you were sleeping or while, while you were away from the computer, um, because you placed the order right here, the order the, on this day, it actually triggered that order and I got you in. So essentially you're in, you're in a trade. And you should check that, that that you actually have your stop loss place. And that's about it. Essentially you're in a trade. If this trade works, then you, you, you can definitely expect more than a thousand dollars, right? Risk to one on one ratio or two to one, or you can even like start doing managed positions and, and you can do much, much more than that. But if this trade goes against you, essentially you'll be losing a thousand dollars, right? Out of out of ten thousand. So let's see what happens uh, in the next couple of days. So now next day, you're on a profit immediately, right? So you were a little bit on a on a on a. Once this actually got triggered, it, the order actually went down a little bit down, so you didn't make money. But in the next day, now you're making money, okay? Uh, there is a good question saying, can you move your stop loss up? Yes, definitely you can. However, there is a lot of 
intricacies about it because you can you can actually at this point move the stop loss up and you basically go into your broker change the stop loss and move it on your entry and guess what now you have free money right like you're not if this trade goes against you then it's going to basically take you out we know uh, you know so if you put it if you put the stop loss right on the line then have in mind that you're gonna pay the fees for both trades so even though if it hits your stop loss on the entry you're gonna have uh, you're gonna actually pay fees and you actually might have some slippage right so that's the intricacy of moving the stop loss okay so this there's definitely ways to manage that i think uh we're gonna go over uh next week in terms of how to do uh, position management and stuff like that. So, so, so there's so many different ways. Um, we're going to be talking about trailing stops because trailing stops is they're tricky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but let's see what we happen next. So now essentially you, you start assessing uh, what the trade could do, right? Because it's a, because you can see that it starts breaking up and start breaking that sort of bullish condition now like you you know you could see that this one is actually breaking the range of one two three four five six six days seven days give or take so yeah we're gonna we're gonna be talking much much more in terms of how to manage these trades and stuff like that but then you keep you go next you go next you go next right so for instance this is a really really great example let's say that you actually move your stop loss here right? More than likely, you'll be out of the trade. Why? Because this candle actually put your stop loss. And then what happens psychologically is that you usually, um, once you're out, you say, oh, I'm, right, I'm, I'm out and I'm saved. But usually you never go back in, right? Because the setup, it, it already happened in a way. So I'd rather manage things differently. We're going to go into uh, more detail probably in the next couple of, of, of weeks. So let's see what happens next, right? Is that a winner? Is that a loser? Who knows, right? If you don't. All right. All right. All right. So that tells you that it went against you a little bit more, right? Now, at this point, after you get a few trades, right, you can actually use one of the tools uh, that we use. We use the FIV, but, it's, but if you measure from your entry, See, uh, you have 29% uh, from your entry to your stop loss. So 29.10, 29 right? Which you can mimic by this tool right here, the long position as well. Um, by the way, you click on here. Uh, if you don't have it on your icon list, there is a little triangle here that says, don't, uh, like it will give you all these options. So you go long position, and then you drag it, you drag the stop loss and it's telling you that it's about 30%. So if you want one-to-one -one risk reward, essentially, if you want to make the same amount of money that you're risking, then you need to get out at 30%, right? So essentially you move it up and that will be your first target in a way, right? There you go, okay. So that's your first target. So if you get out of here, essentially you just made a thousand dollars, right? They, so that's one way to make to to manage your your um, your trade. Another way is to actually do half here and move your stop loss, and then this could go probably double. So if you risk, if you if, if, when we talk about two to one risk reward ratio, essentially we talk about that if we risk if if our risk from our entry to a stop is 30%, we should get out at 60%, right? It's a double of the the, the, space, the the ratio between your entry and your stop loss, right? So we're aiming for those type of trades. We're aiming for at least two, two trades, but that doesn't mean that you can take some of, especially if you have four days and and and, and the trade hasn't moved move up that much. So this is, uh, a way to actually know what your potential target could be. Can this go more than that? Definitely, right? But then uh, position management and trade management is something that we're going to tackle in the next couple of, of, of weeks. 
So um, I think that's it in terms of 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 the setup, guys. Uh, I think that will be a really, really. Otherwise, I will give you so much information. It will be so much. <laughs> you might be overwhelmed. So I think that should be all right. Um, in terms of uh, any questions so far. Very good question. Okay, how are you using leverage? Why does leverage say 0 0.34? Beautiful question. This is this is great question. Okay. You guys let me let me let me talk about leverage. Okay. Essentially, because this is this is uh, leverage is is a subject that is misunderstood. Really really misunderstood uh, at so many different levels. Okay. Think about leverage as a loan that you can take from the broker, right? So if the broker gives you 10x, you can take up to 10x. If the, if the broker gives you 20x, you can take up to 20x. If the broker uh, gives you um, uh, 50, you can take up to 50, okay? So can you, you have to take it? No, okay? Because we're managing our risk right here. Right, because we're managing a risk between between our stop loss and 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 in our entry. If I go a little bit tighter, so the tighter the stop loss and the entry, the more leverage you're gonna be using. What do I mean by that? Let's imagine that let's imagine that this is our low. Let me just delete this, and I want you to to pay attention to what's gonna happen to our leverage if I change my uh, entry to stop ratio. Okay, so right now we 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 have a zero point thirty four uh, leverage. Why? Because we're using less of that of, of our account. That's why leverage means that you're using uh, using less of what you have. Using leverage is using more more than what you have. Right at this moment for this position only, we're using less. Therefore, we're not using leverage at all. Right. So. If let's say just for fun that my entry is here and my stop loss is here, right? See, I'm gonna show you what happened to this leverage. So I'm going entry, right? And that's my entry. Okay, and my stop. All right, so automatically, right? Automatically, my leverage increased from seven, from thirty-four to seventy. I'm still using leverage. No, I'm not still. I'm not using leverage. Why? Because this is my only trade. However, let's say that. Let me close that. Let's say that um, I increase my risk trade at twenty percent. Okay, so. If I increase this at 20%, I'm going to be risking on this trade $2,000. Now I'm using leverage. Why I'm using leverage? Because my size now is over fit my $10,000. And so now I'm borrowing the difference. I'm borrowing 39, uh, 309, like 0.39 of my leverage. I'm, I'm borrowing $3,936, uh, you know, that's what I'm borrowing, okay? So I'm starting to using leverage. Let's say if I if I want to raise more on this trade, let's say if I go 30, which I don't recommend, by the way, I'm just going, it's just making the point of how leverage is going to be used, right? So, and this will become really handy when you start placing more trades and more trades and more trades. Probably in, this, in the first couple of trades, you might not be using leverage, but then in the other ones you will. So the tighter the stop loss is the more leverage you will use. So if we, want to risk $3,000 here, we we'll go 30%. Now my position size is actually 20,000. So I need to place this $20,000, uh, 21,000, give or take, right? Uh, so it's telling me that I'm be using 2X leverage on this trade, okay? So that's what leverage is, 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 is used for. Obviously in the first trade, depends on how tight your stop loss is, 
then you might be using a lot of leverage, you might be using none. So, 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 so that's the good thing about uh, managing your risk according to your account balance, okay? Um, cool, 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 cool. Uh, the question here, let's go through your question. I lost, I lost all the questions. Uh, there is a there is a question here. Dynamic trailing stop loss to trigger after moving five percent into the profitable zone. Ah uh, yes. Um, something. Let me just quickly touch something about the trailing stops. So trailing stops are handy. However, they're very difficult to quantify because essentially you need to tell uh, the broker, "I want to move my stop. I want to start moving my stop if the price goes above." this X percent. So what the what the broker will do is will start moving your stop loss, right? When the market moves certain percent, you can set it up, you can say 5%, 2%, 3%, whatever. So if the market doesn't move, uh, it doesn't move, but um, it, it, if you activate that too soon, right? What happens here, let's go back to this example. Of our entry, right? Let's say that you set it up at five percent, right? And this moved twelve percent. But let's say you set it up at fifteen percent, just for just 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 for the just for an example sake. So if you set it up fifteen percent, it never trigger your uh, it never trigger your 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 uh, your trailing stop. Therefore, you might be losing money. Like if this actually comes back down then you might get stopped down. So trailing stops are handy, but they're tricky to set. So hopefully that that makes sense. Um, That's lovely, Maurizio. So we've taken up 90 minutes of people's time. So we're going to have to cut the, cut the head off of this beast. Yep. Nice. Have you covered everything that you wanted to cover? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much at least all the basics are there. So... Yeah, in terms of uh, all the setups and how to place uh, those orders, right? Which is, yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. So just to, just to reiterate what we've, what we've done here today then. The Safe Leverage Workshop is a series of six live events that are being made into a very expensive product. So anybody that's watching the replay, which is only going to be up in the 100X Club for one day, OK, so the position size and spreadsheet, you can see, has got the word demo across the top of it. OK, it's unsupported. There is no support for that spreadsheet. There is no email support for this. And there's no community support for this other than the community itself. So what we've done today is allow you to see everything that we're doing for free. But it's got caveats with it. If you're not here. If you miss the replay, I'm sorry. That's that's the way it is, okay? So please don't email support asking about candle closes or anything like that, okay? You will just get a standard message sent to you that says there is no support for this product. So if you want to do more than this, if you want to understand more, if you want to get deeper into it, then there's two choices. One is that you hobbyist it inside the 100x coin club you find friends you buddy up and you you practice the other one is is that you wait until this product is a paid product and then when it is a paid product there will be a group there will be a table of contents there will be support and everything that you would expect with a with a paid uh product okay yes scott did say that he will be sharing the uh the slides i don't have that link otherwise i would give it to you uh immediately and anybody that does read scott's daily emails and was here last week will know that scott sends out or at least he did last week he sent out a replay uh just for email subscribers so it's really worth your time to be invested in being in the group in reading the emails and in serving uh serving yourself okay all right that was a fantastic session then so it'll take about uh 
I don't know, two or three hours to get the video up with the processing time, and that'll be inside the 100 X Coin Club. I expect Scott will probably send the slides out um, via email. If not, he's had to go straight to a meeting. Uh, that's why he's no longer uh, on the call. Yes, thank you, Tuck. It is a nice shirt. This is my bull run shirt. If you see me turn up with a red shirt on, then you should be thinking about placing shorts, okay? But today is the bull run uh, shirt. Thank you, uh, Maurizio. That was absolutely fantastic, man. Thank you for everybody that, that contributed in the chat. Real pleasure. All right. Thank then. you, guys. Ta -da. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.